the piano. It's one of the earliest, one of the oldest designs that we have in every recording studio on earth. Still in people's houses, people play them all the time. The highest density of pianos per unit population is in Cuba, of all places. Now, the piano itself was invented in the early years of the 18th century, and in fact, the oldest surviving piano in existence, which lives in New York, is 300 years old this year. 1720 it was built. Now, it was originally the piano, a wooden framed instrument with metal strings strung across it. So that wooden frame had to be extremely strong. In the 19th century, the piano gained a metal frame, which gave it a little bit more stability and also a slightly different sound. In conjunction with things like the hammer tips being different, the piano has evolved over the centuries and it will continue to evolve. Now, of course, in modern day, piano is about 200 and something kilograms. That's heavy. We can't really move that about. So in a recording studio, it makes sense to have a set of very good soft synth sounds to use. I've got here the Roland FP4, which is a fantastic keyboard. It was built, um, you know, it's 2004, I think I bought this, and it synthesizes a piano very well. It does a grand piano, and it has a very important feature, which is endemic on all of these sort of soft synth sounds in that it sounds different when you've got the sustain pedal down or as well as up. So if we've got a note here, that's with the pedal off, with the pedal on, you can hear a sudden stereo breadth to this. Now it's important to wear headphones actually for this demo or have a very, very nice set of speakers so you can hear the proper difference between these pianos. So I'm going to play something on this Roland FP4 and then I'm going to move to some of the other sounds. But you can hear that they sound very similar. There are only subtle differences between them. And you think, well, why do you need all of these sounds? Is one sound better than the other? Well, they're just more subtle. Somebody, you know, if they say, oh, no, you don't want that piano. No, this is much better. It's, it's completely subjective. It's nothing to do with the quality of the plugin. It's simply to do with the style of music that you're playing. So here's the FP4. So there's a sort of range of notes on the piano and a range of loudnesses. Now, it's important at this stage to realize that sampling a piano is incredibly difficult you can end up with gigabytes of samples. In fact, some of these pianos are. They're, you know, just notching up to sort of hundreds of megabytes just for one instrument. The reason? Well, there's 88 notes on a piano and quite a few different dynamic levels that you can play at and including the pedal sample here. So in fact, for every single sample on this piano, you've had to double them to get the pedal sounds as well. There's lots going on in there, masses. And of course, there's stereo samples as well. When you sat at a piano, the bass notes aren't going to be sharply on the left, but they will be gradually over to the left. And then the upper ones, they're going to tend to be over to the right, but it's a very complex operation. Miking up a piano, that's hard as well. So there is the FP4. Now I'm going to move through some of the sounds that are available on Logic as included instruments. And then I've got some contact stuff as well. Some of the more expensive pianos. And I've also got some iOS pianos to play you. They're really good for free instruments. And you'll hear those in a second. So turning down the volume of the FP4 instrument and US being up to the keyboard or to the computer, we've got the Bosendorfer Grand to start with. That's a different sound to the Roland. I quite like it. It's, it's a bit sort of darker. Moving on to the Yamaha, this one. It sounds a little bit simpler, a little bit not as quite as highbrow as the Bosendorfer, but the Yamaha is also a little bit more mono. It's still stereo sound, but it's just brought in a bit. 
you may prefer that. It may be something, if you have a piano part that is just an accompaniment role, the Yamaha may be the one for you. Moving on to the Steinway. That one for me has more dynamic range. When you really hit the keys at the top, they kind of fizz at you. Great, lovely. Now we get to the contact sounds. Now the gentleman, this is a, a sort of, um, this is the first upright piano of the set actually. Now the upright piano, it's important to have an upright piano sound. Everyone issues the upright piano in favor of the grand piano. They think, oh yes, grand piano, it must be better. Well, the upright piano is a completely different instrument. It's like comparing the classical guitar and an acoustic guitar. Yeah, sure, they've both got frets and strings and they're both tuned the same. They're different, completely different things. So here's the upright sound. Now you'll hear quite a lot of difference in the bass. You'll hear that it's, it's seemingly out of tune. Well, it's not out of tune. It's the fact that the bass strings on an upright, because they're shorter, you can't get the full fundamental note. Lots of the note is made up of this sort of complex harmonic series because you can't hear the fundamental, it's too short and there's not enough body on the upright piano to faithfully reproduce that note at the bottom. A piano tuner will never be able to get those notes in tune and neither should they. Now, some of these sounds on the contact, for example, you can synthesize the pedal sound. You can say, oh, okay, well, I'm, I'm gonna, I want some um, anatomy. Here we go, resonances. If I say, uh, go to the, um, the noises, here we go, the, the pedal noise. Sounds like a heartbeat, but it means that it adds the sound of you actually depressing the pedal, the sustain pedal. it adds a sound to that, to the piano. So you get all of those things. The pedal, the strings, the damper, the hammer. You can hear all sorts of stuff in the background. So that's extra samples it's got to store. Whether or not you'd want those, well, I don't know, would you? Maybe. If it was a solo piano, perhaps you could inject a sense of realism with that. Now, moving on to the grandeur. This is the sort of flagship contact grand piano, and it's very nice. Just going back to the FP4, The grandeur there just has a little bit more subtle mid. It's a little bit more sympathetic to the, the overall piano sound, but hey, you know, that's quite new. This is 15 years old. So actually this is stacking up very well to my sounds. Now the Maverick, which is a contact sound as well, this is really synthesizing a piano that was probably built around the turn of the 20th century. So something of a hundred and something years old. So it's had some, you know, it's had one or two tunes played on it, let's say. And you hear it's quite fluffy and woolly in the bass there. It's lovely, it's really nice. Everything has been thought through. Then, of course, we have those sort of, um, you know, modern takes on a piano, the Giants. This is actually one of my favorite ones. It's not really meant to be a faithful reproduction of any piano. It's just got extra things that you can do with it. But I like using this for jazz ballads. got a certain nice compression to it. Okay, now 
I've got my USB lead here, which I'm going to unplug. And I, instead, I'm going to plug in the iOS device that I've got here, which is in fact an iPhone SE. <laughs> and this has got, if I just go to the uh, garage band sounds, there are two pianos on garage band. There's grand piano and there is, um, just grab my iPad because GarageBand has been removed from my phone because I didn't use it enough. So iPad instead, I'll just plug that in. So if we just go, the iPad and the iPhone have essentially the same sounds on them, um, but obviously a phone might be more convenient at a gig. You can just put it on top of the piano and just play through the sounds. So I've got, uh, if I just go to a piano, as I said, there's two options. If I just go to that, uh, just go to the keyboard instruments, more sounds, uh, and I'm going to go and find myself the grand piano. As you can hear, it's quite bright and quite sort of you know, in your face. It's also quite a mono-y sound. However, the classical grand really does stack up quite nicely. hear one thing though there it's not fully polyphonic if you do a scale it gradually takes notes away as you try and add more but you know it's only for, if you're doing lots of scales if you're just doing chords So if you need a piano sound, you've got a controller and need to take a piano sound to a gig, it's on your phone. <laughs> okay, so that is the iOS one. Now there are other things like I've got on my phone here, I've got one called Retro Piano, which is just a free plugin. I just downloaded it. It's just thinking, oh, I wonder what that's like. What is it like? Let's have a listen. This one even has a vinyl crackle noise to go with it. How nice. Oh, there's a reverb there. If I take the reverb off for a second, um, it's, you know, it's everything's accessible on the phone here. Just take the reverb all the way off so that you can't hear any reverb, you just hear the piano. Oh, it's not going to set the world on fire, but for a free sound that you can just have in your pocket, you know, imagine that 10 years ago, it just simply wouldn't have been there. So there is a bit about pianos. I hope the sort of differences between them don't sort of set, set you too much towards one piano, because actually they're used for different things.